Anyway, it's just, okay, it's seven past, so we can begin our class. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face. Let us pray, O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, crowned by the same spirit, and be truly wise, and ever rejoice in his consolation through Christ our Lord. Our Lady, seat of wisdom, pray for us. Pray for us. <laughs> in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. First of all, happy feast. Today is the Nativity of our Blessed Lady. Um, and um, secondly, we, we've covered the third declension. Um, so we know more or less what those nouns look like. That's the, the good thing. Um, we're, going, we're going to come back to them, but in the form of sentences. So I'll be preparing um, um, uh, some exercises, practice exercises um, for you to do, to try. Um, it's going to be easier because now we can actually use, because we have the third declension where the majority of nouns are, it means we can use the text of the mass or the scriptures because then the words will be more familiar. Um, fourthly, the um, third declensions are easily, the, lot, a lot of them um, have, have um, daughter um, verb, words in English, so you can recognize them. And fifthly, today I hope to do the fourth and the fifth declensions, which means we'd have done all five declensions of all five declensions for the nouns. So you should be able then to recognize them. Now, the, we are on um, page 39, but um, I'll go through the PowerPoint. The, um, the good thing ab about that is having the nouns, it's a matter of recognizing them and then being able to identify, well, if you recognize me, identify, identify the, the declension. Um, that we can do when we look, we can do more easily when we look at the adjectives that describe them, because the adjectives come from the first and second declensions. Now, uh, we have the um, adjectives in the third declension. So that means we have to do third declension adjectives, which are not very different from the nouns and they behave, they obey the same rule as the first and second. So they, they behave the same way. The other good news is that there are no adjectives in the fourth and the fifth declensions. So when we finish, um, when we've done this, when we've done the um, fourth and fifth declensions, um, I'll, I'll probably go back to verbs because the, the, that, the, the, uh, the, the other tenses, the past tense and the future um, are fairly easy, one of the easiest things. So having said that, and assuring you that this is going to be easy, um, we can begin. So. So here we are. F5, good, okay. So this is the session 15. And we're going to look at the fourth and the fifth declension now. Okay. Or oh, I should have said nouns of the fourth and fifth declension. But you understand what I mean anyway. Okay. Now, one of the, before we go any further, oh, no, I better, I better do that first. Um, no, why the, okay. 
this is just uh, to a refresher for the third declension. Remember, we have lots of different endings, but the words are straightforward. I'll skip that. I'll come back to that later. Right, fourth declension. Okay, general remarks. The characteristic ending for the fourth declension noun is us, US. Okay, now a little confusion can begin because we know for second declension nouns that the nominative is US. So the, that is a possible confusion, but it's not going to be a confusion because in the second declension, it's in the nominative case, in the fourth declension, it's a genitive. So, they, so you can see from the context which one it is. But of course, if you recognize the word itself, it helps. So fourth declension nouns end in US, US, or U, U, one or the other. So if that happens, it tells me that there are two forms. Okay, so the fourth declension nouns and the new US, US or U in the nominative singular. Remember for all the nouns, we always start off the nominative singular and the genitive singular. So it's US in the nominative and US in the genitive. So we're going to have- father, US. do you have something up on your screen? We only see in lingua latina. We're not seeing your screen uh, if okay. you're reading something from your screen. Yes, um, I am now. We, we had that problem before, didn't we? Uh, okay, let me go back. Is that better? No. We, we no still see in Lingua Latina. Uh, okay. L let me stop and start again. And please, if, if there is a problem, let me know because we are having internet issues here and um, having other issues too, by the looks of it. Okay, I'm going to share again. Okay, can you see? Yes, yes Father. Oh, great, okay. <clears throat> so we, let me go to F5. Okay, right. Father, you, you could blow it up a bit, Father, like um, zoom, you could zoom it. Um, no. I, I can't, I, I only have the, but I think you can do that. We can, yes, we can zoom it. And Is it too small? With screens. Oh, okay, yes, I can zoom it, okay. Okay, right. Okay, so we start, we, we start again. Fourth declension nouns, the general remarks. The characteristic ending for the fourth declension noun is US, US. Remember, we said that the characteristic for the first declension is AE, the genitive. For the second declension, it's I. And for the third declension, it's IS. For the fourth declension, it's US. So that's a characteristic ending. Okay. So the fourth declension nouns end in US or U in the nominative singular. So if it's nominative singular, it's either US or U. And the genitive in whatever, whichever one, whichever nominative case is US, okay? We'll, I'll show you a table so it will become clearer. So those nouns that end in US are mostly masculine. So fourth declension are mostly masculine, like the second declension. You can remember that they are even, okay? 
So the even declensions are masculine. The first declension is mostly feminine. Third declension is mixed. Okay, and we'll come to the fifth later. So again, just, a, just to help you recognize the little, little patterns. So there are a few feminine nouns among them. These must not be confused with nouns in US of the second declension. We'll explain how to avoid being confused. Those nouns that end in U are all neuter, which is great, all neuter. So whenever it's U, it's a neuter. And it must not be confused with the neuters in US of the third declension. Okay. So we have to avoid these little pitfalls. There are no adjectives belonging to this declension, which is great news. Okay, no adjectives. Adjectives are first, second, and third. Okay, next. The following are the case endings for the fourth declension. Remember, we had six cases, nominative. What's that? Okay, nominative, I don't know where that, that line came from. Anyway, nominative, vocative, accusative, genitive, dative, ablative. Okay, so we have the noun. We know what the ending is. If you see the table. In the first um, we, first column gives us the cases. Then I have the second column, the second and third column. The second and third column are masculine and feminine because the feminine. Oh, Father, we're not seeing the we column. We're not seeing the columns, Father. Okay, right. Don't know what's doing that. I don't know that red line just appeared from somewhere. I don't know where or how. Are you seeing what you're seeing now? General remarks? Yes, Father. General remarks. We okay. General, yes. Right. Let's, so if I go forward, is it changing? Not yet. Not yet. Do you changed. see the table? No. 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 Oh, okay. Right. I'm going to have to stop share again. And let's try again. Okay, are you seeing the table now? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, right. So remember what we said about the nouns and the verbs for that matter. We have a stem and we have the ending. Agreed? Yes. So the stem can vary, can be any kind of thing. We don't really care. But the endings are always the same. Okay? So the characteristic ending for the fourth declension is U.S. Agreed? Yes. Agreed? Good. Yes, you said, yes. You said that the, most of the nouns in the fourth declension are masculine, but there are a few feminine. And then we have some that are neuter. The masculine and the feminine will have the same form. Okay? You're going to have the same form, just as they did in the third declension. Okay? The neuters will always end in U. So when we have, when we look at the case endings, we have the stem plus the genitive ending. Agreed? Yes. Right. Yes. So, yeah, so here we have then masculine, feminine. This, these two columns apply to both masculine and feminine. So in the singular, we have the stem plus US in the singular for the nominative case. Agreed? Yeah. Yes, okay. Yes. If we go, 
if we go across to the plural, we have the stem plus us again. That's the same. Okay. So that, uh, yeah. that we're saying essentially that in the nominative case, the singular and the plural are the same. Yes. Okay. With the vocative, the same thing applies. The vocative would just be like the nominative. Okay? Yeah. For the accusative, we still have the stem, but instead of US, we now have UM, um. Because remember the accusative, we were always associated with that M. Mm -hmm. So teram, dominum, Ram. okay? Mm -hmm. Verita, tem, M. Okay. But in the plural, it's US. Okay. So that tells me for a fourth declension noun, when we see the US, it could be nom it could be nominative, singular or plural, vocative, singular or plural, accusative, plural, or genitive, singular. Okay. Because yeah. the genitive singular will be the stem plus US. Now, for the plural, we have two U's, U-U-M. So it's the stem plus U-U-M. In the dative, we have the stem plus U-I, U-I. Mm. And in the plural, we have Ibus, the stem plus Ibus. In the ablative, we have the U, U, and then we have in the plural, stem plus ibus. Now, to help make, again, the patterns, let's look at the patterns. You notice that the dative is the one that always has that difference. The ablative is just, for instance, in um, the first declension is terra, but in the dative is terre. And remember I told you about it being alphabetical? So here you have the ablative being coming before the dative alph alph alphabetically, and so also the noun. So it's the stem plus u and the stem plus ue. It's just a, a it's just something to help you remember. All right. When we go to the neuter, there isn't much difference because in the neuter, the nominative ends in u. The stem plus U, and the same for the vocative. And for all neuter nouns, the nominative, vocative, and accusative are the same. Okay? All. First, second, third, and fourth. And we'll find out fifth as well. If we go across to the plural, all that we're doing is adding an A. Ua. Okay, mm. so it's a stem plus ua, ua, ua. The same again for the for the neuter nouns. All the plurals of nominative, vocative, and accusative are the same. So that makes it very easy. Now, when we go to the genitive, as we'd expect, for the singular, it's us, us, and for the plural, it's um just as it is a masculine and feminine. So there's no change there. And then when we go to the dative, it's u and u and ibus ibus. Mm. Okay? See, see. Right, now this is, this is just a general pattern, a table you can refer to. Okay, let's look at particular words. Now, now what's going on? Okay. Spiritus, aha, there's a word we know. Spiritus. The fourth declension nouns we have in the masculine. Spiritus, spiritus. And in the, in the um, neuter, we have cornu, cornus. Cornu is a horn. Corn eucopia, for instance, is a horn of plenty. Copius is plenty, cornu is horn. 
Um, if I go back again, okay, if you look in the nominative, you see we have stem plus us, stem plus us, masculine, um, the, the um, nominative. It's the same, okay? Us, us. Yeah. So we're looking at spiritus. Spiritus. Now, we use we use the spiritus a lot, you know, in omnipatries at Kili, at spiritui sancto. 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 Uh -huh. sancto for spiritus. Okay, we'll we'll look at that in detail a little later on. Okay, so when we have the table, this is what we get. And it doesn't make any difference whether it's a masculine noun or feminine noun in fourth declension, the form will stay the same. So I'll just use spiritus as an example, okay? So in the nominative, well, we, we can say that the stem is going to be spirit. And us is a characteristic uh, ending, agreed? Yeah. So we have the stem, spirit, us, vocative, spirit, us, accusative, spirit, tum, genitive, spiritus, and then the dative, spiritui, santo. So that, and when we say Gloria Patri, we're using the dative there, aren't we? Gloria Patri, Patri is third declension. It ends in I, which tells us it's a dative. Okay, Gloria Patri, glory be to the Father. Mm. Et filio, and to the Son, the son, filius is second declension, so it's dative, and to the Holy Spirit, spiritui santo. Okay, so we're using the dative there in, in, um, the, in, that, in that prayer. So we have a spiritui, and the ablative is spiritu. And when we look at the plural, well, it's just going to be spiritus, 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 spirituum. Don't forget, we always need to pronounce each vowel. Okay, so it's spirituum, spiritum, and then spiritibus, spiritibus. Okay, and when we look at the neuter, the conu. Well, it's a neuter, so we know nominative, vocative, and accusative all the same. So it's cornu. We know it's neuter because it ends in u, u. Yeah. So it's cornu, 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 and the plural, cornua, cornua, cornua. When we look at the genitive, it's cornus, as we'd expect, the characteristicus, and then cornum for the plural. The dative is konu, konu, and then konibus, konibus. Mm. Okay, so it's not, it's, it's okay, it's, it's easy. It's easier than third declension anyway. Okay, again, it's, uh, I, I don't expect to memorize them, but you, you, it gives you an idea of what is happening, what's going on. Okay, so notes. Okay, the screen change, you can see that, yes? Okay. Yes, yes. So the fourth declension, masculine and feminine nouns, decline like spiritus, spiritus, which is the same as spirit in English. So whether it's masculine or feminine, it's going to have that form and it will be declined in the same way. Okay, mm -hmm. so no surprises there. So we're going to say common masculine nouns So the fourth declension are spiritus, gradus, a step. Remember all the, most of the nouns in the fourth declension are masculine. So gradus is a step. From which you get grade, gradient, graduate, mm -hmm. and so on. Graduate is someone who has um, progressed out of the school. They've taken a step out of the school to a high level. Common feminine nouns of the fourth declension are manus, the hand, 
So it's manus, manus, a tribus, a tribe, tribus, tribus, porticus, a colonnade. Okay, um, and domus, a house. Okay, so those are the common ones. Um, I put them there because we'll come across them in the, in the liturgy, you know, the hand. Manus Dei, the hand of God. Um, we think of our Lord walking in the colonnade in Porticus Salom Salome, Sa Salome in um, Solomon's Portico, um, and so on. Common neuter nouns of the fourth declension are genu, the knee, from which we get geniflect. Geniflect is to bend, to flect is to bend. So geniflect is to bend the knee. And corno, as I said, as we said, is a corno horn. So a unicorn is, uni is one, corno is horn, one horn, unicorn. Mm. Uh, note particularly that the dative singular of the nouns in US end in UI, two syllables, but the neuters end in U. Okay? That's a peculiarity. Mm. Okay. Um, onwards, domus, so yes. Domus, a house, a home, is irregular in some of its forms because it's closely connected to the second declension. Fortunately, it's not a word that appears often. Um, in accepting the nominative and so on, non genitive. Mm -hmm. But it is irregular. It's one of the few irregular nouns. Uh, okay. Onwards. All right. So just to show you that how irregular it could be, Domus, remember, we said it is feminine. Okay. So we again we look, just as we it, it's it's um the characteristic ending is us us, so the stem is going to be dom d o m. So we just need the stem dom in all of them, but the accusative is do mum. The genitive is domus, the dative is domui, and domo for the ablative. So no surprises there. When we look at the plural, there is a slight variation. It, it can follow the rule that we gave before. But you notice that for the accusative plural, we can have domos or domus. Okay, and domos, of course, looks very much like a second declension, doesn't it? Dominos. And then in the um, genitive plural, we have domorum, dominorum, and domuum. So the first, um, the first one, domorum, looks a bit like the second declension. But as I said, it's a peculiarity. For the rest of it, it stays the same. So it's only the accusative and genitive you may get thrown. So as I said, it's just a small thing you don't have to fret about. Don't lose any sleep, please. Okay. The older forms, another, another peculiarity, the older forms of ubus rather than ibus for the dative and ablative plural is sometimes used. So sometimes you might see ubus. Um, of course, that would tell you that it's ubus anyway. Because you'd expect this to be Ubus. Okay. Somebody now, has a radio on. Yes, somebody has a radio on. And uh, if you can mute your mic. Thank you. So that's the fourth declension. Um, We'll come across it mostly with spirit 
spiritus and Thomas. Could you mute, mute your mics, please? Fifth declension. Again, general remarks. Okay, the fifth declension nouns are characterized by their genitive singular in the EI. I don't who's whose mic is it? No, sure. Someone's mic is on. Hello, please mute your mic. <laughs> I think it's Fitzroy. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. The fifth declension nouns characterized by their genitive endings in EI. So the, again, just a rehearsal. First declension is AE. Second declension is I. Third declension is IS. Fourth declension is US. And the fifth declension is EI. Okay. Um, all fifth declension nouns are feminine. Okay, so here we have fifth declensions are feminine. Just remember what I said, the first declension, predominantly feminine, second, masculine, third, mix, and then the fourth is masculine. So the even, two and five, um, two and four are masculine, and the odd ones, one and five are feminine. Of course, we, there are the oddies who creep in. So you even have transgender nouns, right? All fifth declension nouns are feminine, except for dies, not dies, but dies. That is, um, the, the, it's masculine today. And it's compounds, Mary dies, midday. Mary is, is, is um, middle or half. So Mary Diaz, which is midday. Okay. Um, okay. However, even Diaz can be feminine if the day referred to is a special day, such as the day of judgment. And of course we have the Diaz Ire, which is um, sung at funerals, Diaz, Ila, so day of wrath, that day, that day of judgment. So in this case, um, it is feminine, but it's always masculine in the plural. So if you are speaking of a particular day, a special day, then it's, it, it changes its gender to be feminine. But generally it's um, um, masculine. Um, in usually in uh, parliaments when they adjourn and they don't give um, a date for for a re um, re what for for um, the next meeting they end it with sine dies and not signed eyes as I've heard people say here. sine dies without a day without a date. So, so onwards we have, there are no neuter nouns in the fifth declension. So that makes life very easy. So like the first declension, no neuter nouns. Okay, so we have the neuters in the three, four, um, two, three, and four. Some nouns in this declension do not have plural forms. Okay, well, that's um, no problem because in English, the same thing happens. Um, we have nouns with no plural forms. We have nouns with no singular forms. There are no adjectives in the fifth declension. So that's one less thing to worry about. So the adjectives are in the first, second, and third. We've done the first and second, so we just need to do the third. So those are general remarks. So the general characteristic of the, this noun is the genitive EI. The nouns are generally in feminine, a few masculine, no neuters, 
and um, no adjectives. So let's look at what the case endings are. We said it was EI. So the case endings, I should have put stem, you know, and why didn't I do that? It should be stem plus, okay. Um, okay, I'll correct that um, for next time. So it should be stem plus ES, ES, EM in the accusative, and then EI in the genitive, EI in the dative as we'd expect. And it's looking suspiciously like the um, first declension, and then E. And the plural is ES, 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 all three. A room, okay. There's a room there, and then Ebus, Ebus. Okay, so I should have had stem in front of each of these. Uh, for some reason, I missed it. I'll correct it for next time. Okay. The declension of the is, that is, they is. So here we have it. So the stem, okay, if we if we go back, the stem is EI, so here we have the is, the is, and DM for the accusative, DAE for the genitive, DAE for the dative, and DA for the ablative, not die. DA. And then the plurals are DS, DS, DS. And the room, the ebus, the ebus for the plural. Some relevant fifth declension nouns are space, space, spayi, which is hope. Fides, fidei, which is faith. We get fidelity from that, from, from this. So there are two that we, that we know that will come across. You shouldn't be surprised because faith and hope belong to, to the faith. I don't know why I didn't put them alphabetically. There must be no reason. Requies, requiei, rest from which we get requiem, which is the accusative case, requiem, eternal rest grant, okay, to grant eternal rest, so requiem. Facies, faciei, face. Of course, you get facial and other stuff from that. Res and rei, which is a thing and a fit. And res rei is the most abused word perhaps in Latin because it means all kinds of things. You know, um, if you look in dictionary, there, there are hundreds of things it can mean. And species, species, that is appearance, beauty, species. You get special. You know, okay. As I said, um, the word res rei is feminine. All the nouns in the fifth declension are mostly feminine. It means thing, and it has a huge number of meanings. Thing, issue, matter, story, object, affair, business, fact, the universe, and so on and so on. Um, but you shouldn't be surprised because don't we use the word thing to mean a lot of things? You know, what's that thing going on there between them? You know, and so on. So we shouldn't be surprised that Latin has its own thing word. Combined with the feminine adjective, publica, which means public, you can see by its form that it's feminine, publica, it ends in A. It means the state or the republic and both parts of the word must be declined. Okay, so let's look. 
So, right, if you look, we have, <clears throat> we have um, Res and Publica, we join them together. So it means the public thing. What is the Republic thing? That the Republic, the public thing is the Republic, common to all. So in the nominative, we said that both words need to be declined. It's res publica. The vocative is res publica. The accusative is rem, because res now becomes rem, publicam, feminine. Rei publicae. Rei publicae and republica. And that's where we get the republic from, the ablative, republic. And then the plurals, again, res is ready um, in plural form. So we just need to put the public publica in plural form. So it's res publicae, res publicae, res publicas. It's not accusative. And then re room, res becomes re room. Publicarum and rebus publicis, rebus publicis. But that's a peculiarity. It's not something that's going to crop up every day. Thanks be to God, dear gracias. But the word res is, is going to crop up in other forms. And so it's good to be aware of its existence. So, okay, so we've looked at the five, we've covered the five declensions. First, second, third, fourth, and fifth. And I'm not going to give an overview of them so that you can see them in relationship to each other. Right, the general overview of the five types of declensions of nouns are presented in the following slides. The first two tables show the declension of masculine and feminine nouns. <laughs> the second pair of tab tables show, showed, okay, grammatical there, show that the declension, the declensions of the neuter nouns. Note there are no neuter nouns in the first and the fifth declensions. We mentioned that already. And when we, we're going to decline masculine and feminine nouns, we're going to look in the singular, we're going to do the singular first. And there they are, all five. This is for masculine and feminine nouns in the singular. So we have um, one, two, the five nouns, one, two, three, four, and five. In the first declension, we have terra. The nouns here are genuine, genuine, generally feminine. They're going to take the form of terra. So it's terra, terra, terram. Terre, terre, terra. We've done that already so many times. That's all we need in the singular. The second declension, dominus for Lord. So we have dominus, domine, dominum, domini, domino, domino. The third declension, remember, we said we have um, masculine, feminine, and neuter. Okay. So, right, so here we have the masculine and feminine because we're dealing with the declension of masculine and feminine nouns in the singular. So for the third declension, we have homo, which is man, and we have ovis, which is feminine, and that's sheep. So we're looking at the homo. We have homo, homo, hominem, and then hominis, because if we look at the nominative and genitive, it's homo hominis. So homin is the is going to be the, the stem. And then we have homini and homine. Okay, a date ablative and dative. Notice the alphabetical order again. And then for the ovis, for the feminine, the sheep, we have ovis, ovis, ovem, and then ovis, the genitive, and then ovi, ove. In the fourth declension, which is masculine generally, spiritus, which is spirit. So we have spiritus, spiritus, spiritum, and then the genitive spiritus, and then the dative spiritui, 
and spirit two for the ablative. And then the fifth declension, Diaz, which is day. So we have Diaz, Diaz, DM, DA, DA, and DA. Now, if we look at them together, what do we notice? Well, the, we notice the nominatives, they, they vary, of course, as we'd expect. But we notice with the second and the fourth, we mustn't confuse them, they have the same form. The vocative, we notice, the vocative is the same as a nominative, except for the second declension, where we have an E. That's the only one. Otherwise, nominative and vocative are the same. For the accusative, it always ends in M. And it also carries the characteristic. Okay, so it's am, um, m, m, um, m. Okay. The genitive, well, we have a, we have the, the, the um, characteristic ending for each one. So, a, i, is, is, us, and a. The dative, again, you can see it's the one that's off. Is, it looks exactly like the ablative, except that for that variation, the A becomes E, E becomes I, and so on. So we've looked at the masculine and feminine nouns for the singular. We're going to look at them for the plural. I couldn't put them together because it just make the table too complicated. So we're looking at the plurals now. So again, for the ter for the first declension, we we see how it. Um, what happened? That genitive is an error. There isn't there. There are. There's I sneaked in there. Okay, that's two errors. I need to correct. Um, uh, okay, dominorum for the, I'm sorry, if I go on, teres, okay. You, I think we can just take it for granted. I think that just our genitive, first declension genitive is a type in, a type in error. Okay, and if we look across, again, the nominatives, we can see basically the similarities. So nominative and vocative are the same all the way across. For the accusative, we have terras and then dominos and then homines and oves and spiritus and dies. Um, and then the, for the genitive, um, well, it, it kicks a characteristic ending. And then the dative, we have teres, dominis, hominibus, ovibus, spiritibus, spiritibus, and diebus. And similarly for the ablative of going across. Okay, so now for the neuters, singular again. Now remember, there are no neuter nouns in the first declension, nor in the fifth. So I only have them for the second, third, and fourth, which is um, presented. So again, <clears throat> the classic thing about the neuter, nominative, vocative, and accusative are the same. So we have verbum, 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 verbum. Then the, the genitive is verbi. This we deal with the singular. And then verbo, verbo. For the third declension, we have opus, which is work. So it's neuter, 
So normative, vocative, and accusative are the same. Opus, opus, opus. And then operis, because it's going to, is is the ending, the characteristic ending. So oper is the, going to be the um, stem. And then opor, operi and opere. And then we have another ending for um, altare. It's in nominative, so we have altare, 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 and then altaris. So again, AR, um, IS, so it's um, same altari and altari. And then konu, we did, but again, it's, it's a neuter. So it's konu, 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 konus. Konui, konu. And then the plural. So again, remember what we said about the neuter nouns? That the plurals always end in A, right across. So when we look at for third, for second, third, and fourth, we look at the nominative case. The plural is verba, opera, alteria, and konu. Sorry, konua. And then for the vocative, it's the same. The accusative is the same. The genitives, verborum, operum, alterium, and konuum. Now remember, you may not, but you should remember for the for the third declension, when it's a vowel, we have that extra I appearing. Okay, and then for the dative verbis, and the ablative is verbis. The second is operibus, altaribus, and the dative and the ablative is the same. And then conibus, conibus. Okay, okay so that's um, that completes the second. Um, the, so that completes the five. Um, declensions. So we did. We looked at this. I think last week. Well, I'm going to look at it again. This is the prayer. The prayers at the foot of the altar. And we're going to look at the uh, nouns. So in nomine, nomine is nomen, nominis, the declension. In the name, in, that tells me it is ablative. Agree? In the name is ablative. In the name, patris of the father, which is a genitive, it's a third declension as well. Pate, patris. Et and fili, well, it's from filius, it's also genitive. So it's of the son. Et and spiritus is what? Which declension? Fourth declension. Us is genitive. It's masculine. And we have sancti. Sancti is an adjective. It's describing the spirit, namely holy. And it's a second declension, a second declension adjective. Okay, so it's san sanctus, sancta, sanctum. So here we're going to have is, is the adjective has to match the noun. The noun is in the genitive, so the adjective sancti must be in the genitive as well. Spiritus is singular, sancti must be singular. If there were more than one spirit, would still have spiritus, but the sancti would become sanctorum, wouldn't it? The plural, genitive plural. And amen is intranslatable. It's, it's, it's the same in all languages. So even in, in just in the sign of the cross, we we can get we can identify the nouns um, and their declensions easily. Okay, et in troibo, in troibo is a 
verb, which we haven't done yet. Ad, so that's motion, isn't it? Ad altare. So it's it has to be has to be accusative. I'm going to the altar. That's why it's altare. Okay, which is which is neuter. I remember we said altare is neuter. So it's going to the altar and day of God. Dei is and second declension and is genitive. Ad deum, again, deum, we did this and it's accusative. So it's a motion, it's movement. So I'm going to God. Who, qui, we haven't done the, um, the whatever those things are called. Um, uh, can't think of the word. Rel relative pronouns. Okay. Latificat is also, well, that's um, uh, a noun. Uh, sorry, that's a verb. Eat, so he, so something is given joy. So I'm going to God, who gives joy? Juventutem, the declension, feminine. So juventutem is youth. Meam, my. And we can see, since it's meam, that juventutem must be feminine. Who gives joy to my youth, my youngness, my Childhood, almost. Okay. Right. Yudika me. Now, yudika is an imperative. Judge me. Judge me, O oh God, Deus. Et dicerne, again an imperative. Discern, distinguish, separate. Causam meam. Causam is second declension. Sorry, it's first declension. Okay. Um, so it's first declension, mayam, my cause. Distinguish, discern, dis my cause. They from gente. Aha, gente is what? The declension, gens, gens, gentis, the declension. It's ablative. They tells me it takes an ablative form. So it must be an E, not an I, E. Non sancta, well, not holy from a people that's not holy, from a nation, a people, a family, and so on. So who are not holy, ab from a man, homine, iniquo, a horrible man, an iniquitous man, an unjust man, okay, a deceitful man, all of these. So homine is ablative, iniquo must be ablative, et and the loso is also ablative because it's in equal et doloso, both together. And those two are describing the man in the ablative. So they also in ablative. Because they end in O, it means they're masculine. And therefore, homine is masculine. Eroe, lift me up, lift me. So deliver me, save me from an evil man. We are because two, you, S, you are God. You are God. My strength, fortitudo, is strength or power. Hmm? We get the word fortitude. Okay, for you are my strength, my fortitude. Why raise a question? Why me? Why me? Are you being cast? Why are you casting me off? Why these tears, tristis, which is a third, third declension, sadness? Tristis in Chedo, I'm inflamed with sadness. While the while doom is while, may affligit. Something is afflicting me. And it's inimicus, the enemy. Why is the enemy? Inimicus is the second declension. Okay, so you so you just the press at the foot of the altar. Now, if you look at it, you can see now, I hope, I really do hope and pray that it's starting to make sense. You can look at it with a little, a little more familiarity, that it's not, um, it's not no longer strange, um, but it's interesting. Now, I think we have, okay, seven minutes pass. I, I'll leave it there. 
I'll, I'll leave the rest of the prayers. Um, it's in, in the notes for you to go through it the same way. Um, some, some of the words, well, many of the words are, are, are um, verbs in the, in the um, imperative, which we have not done as yet, um, but we'll hopefully we'll get to those soon. So I want to do the past tense and then perhaps the imperative because it's, it's very simple and the imperative appears many places. So lucem is lux, lucis, light. Veritatem is veritas, veritatis. Um, montem is mons, montis. Um, tabernacula, tabernacule. Altare, there's altar again. Deum, we've done juventutem, youth. TB, Cicera is a harp. Um, sadness, quare, uh, contabas is to disturb. Spera, we did spares, spares, spay, but spera is the um, verb, um, and so on. And just the Gloria. So here we are. Glory be to the Father. Okay, so it's going to be part three. It's going to take the dative form. And you notice that the verb, there is no verb there because in Latin, the verb to be in its various forms is, if it doesn't appear, it's, if there's no verb in the sentence, it's, it's uh, the verb to be in some form or other. So glory, Gloria Patri to the Father, dative, and to the Son, filio, and to the Spiritui, dative, sancto, holy. And then sicut erat in principio. So in again tells us that it's an ablative. In principio must be must be second declension. Yeah. At nunc now, at semper and always, forever in all the ages in secular second world. In the age of the ages, and that's what it means. We it, it's translated to English world without end. But it literally means secular is the world of what the, the um, time is, well, it's um, ages of ages. <coughs> and then uh, the, the antiphon again, I'll go to the altar of God. Okay, my friends. Oh, we have this, as, as I said, we have the rest of it, which we can go through at leisure. So that's the end of session 15. Gracias, Wobbles. The verb had to be is missing. Okay. Thank you, Father. Okay. Thanks very much. Any questions? A lot to absorb, Father. <laughs> yes, a lot to absorb. Yes, but is it, is it logical? Yes. I've tried desperately to make it logical, and language is not logical. <laughs> but um, I think I think I, I, from my perspective, I I'm hoping that to at least make the press a little more um, friendly. A little practice further, and I guess we will kind of get it, you know, eventually. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. I'm optimistic. As I said, I was dreading the third declension. I really was, because uh, it, is, it is the worst part of, of the language. Every, everything after this is easy. As you can see, the fourth and the fifth declension are relatively easy. Are they not? I was expecting resounding yes. <laughs> a bit much easier, easier than the third. <laughs> much easier than the third. Yes, much easier. Okay. Um. Next. Next week we can. Um. 
I would uh, I'd like to consolidate what we've done. So um, I I'll, pr I'll probably go do some more work on on the um, on those nouns, um, and then we we continue. But you'll find the the, the two of the tenses are very easy. The future. The simple future and the imperfect past are very easy. Don't even have to think about it. Yeah. And I hope you believe me, because I, when I said something as hard as it was, and if I say it's easy, it's very easy. <laughs> okay. So anything, you, else before, anything else before we end? No. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, then we can end with the um, Angelus, if there's nothing else. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of the Lord, behold the handmaid of the Lord, eat and eat the Lord is with thee. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Pray for us, Pray for us, Amen. And the word was made flesh and dwelt and dwelt amongst us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord to thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Pray for us, Sinners. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. That we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. For forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace in our hearts, and we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Same Christ our Lord. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us. I mean, the souls of the faithfully invited to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Father. Okay, everyone, have Thank a you. good end of the week. Happy yes. Feast, Thank you, and uh, we'll you. see you on Sunday, please. Sunday. Sunday. Yes, I should send out the notes um, to today or tomorrow. Okay, thank you, Father. Okay, thank God you. bless. God bless. Thank you.